second class. Hi guys, welcome back to 43rd part of the Arduino tutorials. When there is any need of measuring position, the most commonly used devices are potentiometers or encoders. But both of them have completely different working principle. Potentiometers are analog devices and they output analog signals based on the resistance and the voltage drops whereas encoders are digital devices they directly give digital pulses with high and low values i have already done a step by step tutorial on potentiometers so if you are interested you can check out the part 5 video from our arduino playlist so in this video we'll try to understand how encoders work and also at the end we'll interface with the Arduino and do some practical. There are different types of encoders available based on the design and technology used for producing output signals. For this tutorial I am using a simple mechanical rotary encoder which looks like this. Apart from VCC and ground, we have clock and data pins which we can read the output pulse. For better understanding, we can relate the internal structure of the encoder to this particular diagram. In the circular disk, this outer part or the white section, you can consider it as a ground. The blue slots are a source of 5 volts. And here output A pin you can consider as a clock pin of the encoder and B will act as a data pin. When we rotate this disk, each of this pin either get in contact with the 5 volt or the ground. This will result in the output pulse having zeros and ones. So this video will give you more clarity of the working. In the initial state, the B is in contact with the ground. A is contact with the 5 volts. From the waveform, we can see A as 1 and B as 0. Next, both are in contact with the 5 volts. So we can see both high. A contact with the ground, B with 5 volts. So ground 0 and 1. And the fourth combination is both are in contact with ground. So 0 and 0. So this keeps on repeating. So in this clockwise rotation, A is ahead of the B by 90 degrees. So we'll have a look on the anti-clockwise direction. So here B will be 1 and A will be 0. So this is the first combination. Both 1, 1, 1 and 0. And the last combination is 0, 0. So in this anti-clockwise direction, the B is ahead of A by 90 degree. This is how we get the digital output pulse when we rotate the shaft of the encoder. So we need to consider these waveforms as a reference to derive the code logic. From the encoder, we need to find two things. First is to detect whether encoder shaft is being rotated or not. Second is to find out in which direction the shaft is rotated. To detect the rotation, we just need one signal. So here we can take the clock signal. In the code, we have to just check 
if the transition has happened or not either 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 so this remain same for both directions In the second one to find the direction we need one more signal as a reference so here this DT signal comes into picture during transition just check if clock and DT signals are same or not so in this case during 1 to 0 transition and also at 0 to 1 transition we can see both signals have different values and here as well but if you consider counterclockwise direction during 1 to 0 transition and 0 to 1 transition we can see both clock and DT has same values here and also at this point so using this we can find out easily which direction the shaft is rotated so we'll be using this same concept while writing the code later the components you require for this tutorial are Arduino board KY040 rotary encoder module and some jumper wires moving on to the connections the VCC and ground of the encoder goes to Arduino 5 volt and ground DT and clock should be connected to any digital pins I'm connecting DT to digital pin 2 and clock pin to digital pin 3 this encoder module also comes with an inbuilt digital switch but in this particular tutorial we'll be not using that switch so I'll leave it open Coming to the code, let's start with the declaration section. So we have two digital pins for clock and DT and connected to digital pin 2 and 3. So I'll declare these two. DT pin connected to 2 and clock pin to 3. In the setup function, we'll set both the pin modes as input since we are reading from the sensor or the encoder in the loop first we'll read both the pin values using digital read function and store the respective values in the two separate variables for that I'll declare two more variables int dt this variable will store the value of dt pin similarly the clock will store the value read from the clock pin And we have to use this information in the further logic according to the analysis we did with the graph first we have to check whether the transition has happened or not to detect the encoder rotation for that we can use the clock value the logic is to check whether the clock value in the present cycle is same or different from the previous clock value so we need to store the previous cycle clock value I'll declare one more variable for the same clock old and by default I'll initialize the value to 0 if clock not equal to the clock old then the state has changed from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 so in this case to detect the direction of the rotation we'll also check 
if clock not equal to data so which is this scenario then encoder is rotated in the clockwise direction so I will just print the same on the serial monitor direction is CW along with this we will also keep a counter to measure number of steps so count the count is incremented during the clockwise rotation so same variable I will also declare here and initialize with 0 so in order to detect the anti-clockwise direction we can use one more if if clock is equal to dt so in the graph which is this scenario I'll copy the same lines the direction is counterclockwise and in this case will decrement the counter so along with the direction we'll also print the counter value in the serial monitor count so we are left out updating this old clock value so this we can do it at the end of the logic so once all our logic execution is completed just store the present clock value to the old clock value since we have used the serial print functions we will also initialize the serial communication with a baud rate of 9600 so that's all the code we'll upload this and see the results I'll open the serial monitor I'll start rotating the encoder in the forward direction so we can see the direction is clockwise and count is 1 or the step is 1 2 3 so this is how the counter increments in the forward direction now I'll start turning it in opposite direction yeah direction is showing counterclockwise and count has decremented by 1 the value is going less and again forward so this is all about the basics of encoder and interfacing with Arduino for any of your projects if you want to give user input you can make use of the same concept have already made one project which is the timer switch box where I have used this encoder to set the time if you are interested you can check out that video link in the description box in the coming days we'll use this encoder to make some interesting projects that's all for this video for code and circuit check out the link provided below thank you for watching i'll be back in another interesting one